Hello everybody. This morning I was I just pulled my box out of Crafty Me stuff and I was looking at what I had to work with and I was sent this beautiful collar like um, front of bodice applique piece here. It's really beautiful. Look at the colours and it's got lovely sequins and a few beads on it as well. In fact I was sent two of these and one of them I've already used in one of my projects. I only have a little piece left. But I do have this other one here. It's got a bit of a... There we go. Um, I've got this one and I was also sent this beautiful um, bling piece in my first design team package. And I thought how nice it would be to piece those two together and make a choker for my dress form out of that because she's um, she needs updating a little bit you know I made one a couple of years ago for her but um, and I'll I'll see if I've got a photo to insert but no, nothing lasts forever you know our crafting things aren't meant to last forever in a day um, I did want to mention though these sorts of things are wonderful for other things and I was actually sent a choker by Kimmy um, I don't think she does videos anymore quite a few years ago now and I don't, it was actually a wrist a wristband um, thing but what I do is I put it around a jar and decorate my jar with it because I don't really wear jewelry and it was just a little bit too narrow to use as a choker on my dress form I think I did have it on her for a little while then I made another one for myself but that's another idea you can use things like this for to dress up your jars and things like that it's nothing permanent you can take it off whenever you like and update it especially you know we tend to change change what we like every so often or you might want to change up the color of your room so you can do this to coordinate with what you want so I thought I would make her a new one and I thought I would use these two pieces from Crafty Me Shop to start that um, I've also I've also got this ribbon here that I thought I could use only a small piece that one I thought I could use this for the tie and see the color it goes when my skin is behind it now my skin is not the same color as my dress form but I'd like to kind of keep it um, blended so I thought I could use this like as you know to weight it a little bit at the back something I can use to tie it but just to give it a little bit more stability because you know this this piece here is a little bit heavier than this piece here so you need something to sort of hold it all in place um, so I'm just going to put that up against my dress form now to make sure that's going to look all right I'll be back in a minute Okay, you can barely even notice that ribbon is there because it's very close to the color of my the dress form fabric. Now, if you had a white dress form, you would probably use a white ribbon or a white piece of fabric behind it. Um, now, because I want that there and that there, see, I want to sort of strengthen that little piece at the back there as well. So I will probably just trim a piece to go behind that that might even be enough um, just for that top arch there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this I think that's probably the best the best way of doing it now I think I'm I'm going to use the matte side of the ribbon against the applique um, I think let's have a look because my dress form is quite matte as well. Uh, no, actually, I think I'll use the shiny side. Um, if it was going to go around a person's neck, 
I would have the shiny side against the skin just for um, comfort but I know this is not going to be going on me or any person it's going on a dress form or on a jar or something like that okay so we have our lovely applique piece here I've got my fabric glue which is the Helmar fabric glue and I'm going to use that and I'm going to put glue do I have a just let me okay I've got this old silicon mat here I think I'll just pop it on there Let's see <laughs> I've got cuts in it and all sorts all right so we're going to put glue on this little top piece first and then I can trim that down there's my little piece that's my little piece so I don't want to take it above the applique piece like that and then I'll get my scissors and just trim that so we can't see it and that little bit of glue will catch the edge of that ribbon as well so that won't f fray Could even make these to put around gift packaging as well I think that would be very very pretty if I open it now I think what I'm going to do here oh it's okay yeah. This will also help to keep all those beads on. This has got so many beads and sequins and things. It's got beads and sequins and um, chain bling. It's really beautiful. Okay. I need enough to tie a bow. So I'll be generous. And put it in the center like that and hopefully that will that will make it much sturdier to stand up a bit as well and then I'm just going to put some glue oops that's the wrong glue I'm going to put glue all around this bottom edge like this and just along the edge of the ribbon there and then I know it's going to sit in here so I'm just going to put it along the top part of this bit of the applique I can always add a bit more if I haven't added enough All right. turn this over and then position always make sure you know where you're going to position it before you add the glue of course I I had already positioned it before to make sure I knew um, I put a bit more under there and that should be quite good okay Oh, hang on. Oh, we 
you need that to be behind. That was silly, wasn't it? Okay, easy, easy fix. We're going to... I wasn't concentrating. Just cut that off. I could have put a slit in here and threaded it through, but I, I'm not. That may have been the better way to do it, but I don't want my beads. I should have thought that through a little bit more before I started. Okay, so we've got that like that. Now we want... Oh, hello. You've decided to say hello. Come on. All right, so this is one piece here. And that's just a matter of gluing that across like that. Are you going to move, Marley? Or are you saying hello? Watch out, this is glue. Yeah, you don't like the smell of that, do you? <laughs> Smart cat. <laughs> so we'll just put that there. I mean, you could put another piece completely across it if you wanted and just tidy it up. But I'm just going to go from here. Like that. And do the same on the other side there. If it were going on the neck, you would have to do this completely different. You would... Um, plenty of this ribbon so maybe just to make it more stable I'm going to put another piece on the inside it tidies it up a little bit as well doesn't it so I think that's what I will do to have things tidy on the both sides it finishes it off better I would probably definitely sew it if it was for somebody's neck it would give a much better finish and it would be much more comfortable I think but this is not what this is for so we'll put that that way so it's nice and soft. Is that big enough? It is, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Tidies it all up. Might just angle that back that way. Angle that one. Like that. There we go, that's made that nice and strong and like see what I mean, um, the colour of my skin, the ribbon, even though my skin's not the same colour as the dress form, it helps to camouflage it a little bit and it gives it that stability. Now what I thought I would do was add some of this bling chain and I got this one from Babycraft. And I thought, because, you know, there's a lot going on here with all the bling, but not so much down here. So I thought I might play around a bit with this. I might put, um, I might have it going like that. there and then some coming down here and some coming down here all right so we've got that much 
and this this is an old pair of embroidery scissors and I, I like to use it for things like this it does these chains are not that hard to cut so I wouldn't use anything you're going to use on fabric though okay so there's that one and we're going to have this one here about there. Um, or if you've got metal cutters, I mine aren't working very well at all. So these are the best thing I've got to cut this sort of stuff with at the moment. Okay, we can put a piece in here, perhaps. Once again, I'm just going to glue all this in, if it, if it looks any good, that is. shorter uh, so it fits oh, it should fit in once I've glued one end I should be able to get it in there like that sort of thing okay uh, oh okay I've got this this is what I I made using this as well I'm Oh, here we go, because I found this and I thought maybe we could, maybe I could use that in the centre, but it didn't look quite big enough. There. Um, but all I have to do, because I've kind of made this already, I could just glue another piece on either side and make it a little bit bigger, which is what I think I will do. I just need to measure that. And all I'm doing is taking it up two shorter than the next one. Like, uh, that, that there. Okay, so I want it a bit shorter than the last one on that, so it comes up at an angle. One on either side. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And glue those on and I think for this one I will use the extra strong glue this is the 450 quick dry adhesive also by Helma always have good ventilation when you're using your strong glues does not take long to dry at all. And it's a nice strong glue. really need to update all my scissors I think. Oh, what did I do? Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, perhaps wait for it to dry longer than I did.
Okay, so once that has dried, I will put that there, like that. Just to add a bit more sparkle down there. Um, and maybe another one. Does it need another one? Um, don't want to ruin it. What about that? That might look silly. Having too many. Um, I feel like I need something there and there now. Like just a bling, perhaps. Oh, uh, just a bling. Okay, we'll get something. Big enough. Need to make a all right. Try the biggest one I've got here. Maybe no, that doesn't look good. Uh, what do you think? That is not our dog. Something there. It's too big. Wouldn't want three, would I? No. Mm. Maybe two. That. Oh, okay. Maybe something like that. I don't want so much down here that it detracts from this beautiful applique piece. I can use that on something else that's not a problem. Maybe I could have just Oops, that wasn't good. Where did that oh it came from that one? Okay. Like that. That I like better. Definitely like that better. Let me see. There you go. It's a bit crooked, but once it's glued on, I think that might be just just right. Right amount of sparkle. Because I want to redress her as well. She's rather demure at the moment, so I might jazz her up a little bit. Um, do I want, like, uh, maybe that, maybe. 
copy. One, two, three. Kind of joining a bit like that. Yeah, that might be good. Like that. One on the other end. I'll cut them to the right length when I'm gluing them on. Make sure because you can manipulate them a little bit. So that there, that there, what about there? Oh, I liked her. I like that, I think. What do you think? Let's see that. That looks nice, I think. Because you'll only see that much, really. The rest goes around the back of her neck. So that's the part you will see, and that looks rather glamorous to me. Mm. Yes, I like that. So. Okay. They're beautiful, aren't they? Um, I'm going to head, go ahead, I think I'll, oh, I can do that. I might fast forward it, I don't know. Depends how... Um, well behaved it wants to be. I'm going to use the quick dry adhesive for this. As long as it's going to look, let's just move those out of the way. It's got to look even with the eye. Or as even as possible. Okay, just a couple to add to the end there. going to put the glue here first. Just make sure they hang right. Is the, that's the one. It's probably easier to put the glue on the back of these. Just the top, top three of them perhaps. Sorry, I'm way off. Still zoomed in, aren't I? So sorry about that. I'm just trying to get it. I don't like the way that's sitting where they're like that, so I'm not sure that's how it will go. I don't like the way that sits. So where's that other one I made? That one. Let's have another look at this. Mm. 
There's that long piece I just took off. Is that it? Yes. Ah, maybe. Okay, got another idea. This is how things change, so. Can you see? I'm just gluing a little piece on. Yeah. Which is the piece I was going to use in the in the center as the longer dangle that changed my mind. If we can curve that around that top applique, just have to lift it up a bit so I can see, because that's how I'm going to see it when it's on the mannequin or the dress form. so sparkly it's hard to see and because the pearls and beads they're not like the applique is not perfectly a circle like that so you just have to do it the best you can do it so maybe that there like that then I can put this going around like that did I want to cut that down a little bit I think I was going to, wasn't I? And that one, like, that joins that up. That one fits just. So, and that one might need trimming a bit, like that. And then going back to this one. Oh, I wonder if I could. Just lifting those last two up that I glued on. See the end ones? I've just lifted them a bit to give it a slight curve. And I think that's what it needs. That will go there then. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, that one needs trimming a bit, I think. That one should be all right. curves it a little bit different on it. just need to hold it up a minute so that I can see it before it all dries. See that applique there is a little bit more curved than that one. And that's why I had to shorten it a bit. But, oh, yeah, that's all right, I think. that works and they are more distance things remember because you know you don't go up to your dress form all the time and just 
stare at her. Um, you see her from a distance more than anything. So there we go. That looks quite nice. I'm quite happy with that. And I'll have to insert a picture and show you what it looks like around her neck. Um, that will... Up if you want it in a bow. Like that upside down bow. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, that will bling her up really nicely. And it looks quite tidy. Um so that said, that's a beautiful bling applique from Crafty Me Shop. It's a beautiful wedding applique from Crafty Me Shop. And the beautiful satin ribbon also from Crafty Me Shop. Nice little beaded choker. And I've also been making some little beaded and sequined flowers that I will quickly show you how I make and add it on to the end of this video. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoyed watching that. Bye. All right, so I was actually doing this down at my dining table because it's been quite cold lately um, and it was just warmer down there than in my room. Uh, but these are the gorgeous sequins that I got from Crafty Me Shop and also these tiny little pearls as well. Uh, I'm thinking they might be a two millimeter pearl and these are beautiful creamy. They look vintage. Whether they are or not, I don't know, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, I mean, these days they make things that look vintage as well. So it can be a bit, you know, you don't know. But as long as it looks, I'm fine. <laughs> um, and this is what I've been making. These lovely little flowers, these beaded flowers. You see, they're just stitched on. Uh, I did try and make a couple of just like little flat sequin flowers, but we'll just pretend we'll just ignore that for the time being i have a beading needle here it's bent because it's well used but that's okay they work quite well when they're bent i'm just taking my needle in like that and please excuse my fingers they're really dry and now they've got a bit of glue on them as well um so I wish, I wish I had lovely nails like I see a lot of ladies have. But every time I put nail polish on and things like that, the glue takes it off anyway. So I just, unless it's a special occasion, I don't, I don't do my nails. I used to when I was a lot younger, but I just don't now. So, um, try not to get a knot in it. I hope I got that out, otherwise it won't go through the properly okay so the first thing you do is you find your center and then I I come out about uh, what's that half an inch it's a pro that is approximately half an inch which is now I only do this by sight, it's just over a centimetre, I only do it by sight, if you wanted them all perfect then you would just put little dots and measure, you know you would measure like an inch and then half an inch in the centre, then measure it the other way and so on, but I don't, I just take it by sight, come out there, I get a sequin, on fingers you can do it. I put the sequin on upside down so if you look at a sequin it's like a little dish so I put my needle in the bottom of the dish so it comes out through the top because that is the top and that's going to be coming up and then I take a 
beige. Oh, yeah, I've got the right glasses on. And this is slow work. And then I take another another sequin from the bottom. Got too many lights on now because I took a photo of the dress for a minute. It's hard to see. And then I take two beads. So it's sequin, bead, sequin, and two beads. Okay, so we have that sequin, bead, sequin, two beads. And then I go back into that center point. Like that. Okay, so that's what it, that's what it looks like there. And then I, once again, kind of guess about half an inch. And this is what I mean. You can mark it precisely if you want. Directly opposite. So this is where we, that's the center. We went under the fabric and out over here, put on our beads and sequins, went back in the center. Now we've come out over here and we're going to do the same and then go back in the center again. So we're going to get our sequin. Whoops, that. Some sequins, the hole is not completely in the center, so I don't use those. I like to use them so they sit fairly evenly. My dogs are noisy outside today. They're not, it's not my dog barking, it's other dogs. We have a street full of dogs here which is the best place to live if you have a dog. <laughs> I just once said to my husband, goodness, you wouldn't want to move to this street if you didn't like dogs, because just about everybody has a dog. There we go. So we've got a sequin bead, sequin two beads again. And we're going to go back in that center point there. like that okay and that's exactly what it looks like and then we come out over here over here see where the pin is we're coming out there and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to come out here put on our sequins and beads go back through the middle and then we're going to come out over here And I'll just fast forward through that then because you, you'll be able to see what I'm doing and it's just you do that eight times. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times and that's your flower. Um, very simple but it, like I said it is time consuming and fiddly because especially with tiny little beads and things but I'm very pleased with how they turned out. You know, especially for my first time doing it. I think I can tell the ones I did first and the ones I did last. <laughs> so you do get better at them as you go along, which is always nice. So now I've come out between the other ones and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to come out, put my beads and sequins on, go back through the center and then come out between these two over here, then between those ones over there and those ones over there. And then you will have your eight little flower prongs and they make these really pretty little flowers. 
Okay, and this is our last one. Back through the center. Like that. So this is the one, you see? How pretty that is. And then we flip it over. There's lots of threads on the back. I do tend to leave them long until I cut them. So just do a few stitches there. And this is just some old dress, like a, a very thin dress fabric. I've got a dress from the op shop and it's tea stained fabric that I cut off it so I've just used that you could use anything you wanted you could use a fine cotton like this or you could use a, a thicker fabric it's totally up to you it was just the first thing I grabbed when I decided to do this okay now what I'm going to show you is let me just put that there so I don't lose it um, what I'm going to do like I'm going to fill it up with flowers before I do anything but I just want to show you what I'm going to do I'm going to get my fabric glue and before I cut them up I'm going to just secure all those threads on the back this will also add a more substance to the actual flower and I'm just going to go around all those threads in a circle with my fabric glue and take it towards the center so like a pinwheel really not going outside of the you know the flower and just doing that and that way it will help to secure those threads to hold all those beads and sequins on because they do take a while to do and you don't want them coming undone so that's what I will do go and secure them all with glue and then I will be able to cut them out and I will just cut them slightly on the inside of the sequence I will do that very carefully um, and that will be my little flowers that I will be able to use in some embellishments and I see that one turned out better than that one that one I'm going to take the sequence off that that's just a matter of snipping my threads that one's not too bad but I'm sure I can do a bit better than than that so I'm going to keep working on that as well so I hope you like that little tutorial of the pearl and sequin flowers take care everybody bye this is the little inspiration for this sequin one that I haven't mastered yet can you see it this one's actually a vintage one that I've had for a while I've only got a couple of them um, and I love them and that's that's the back of them is he and they look really simple but for some reason I haven't got it right so I'll keep working on it